Hi, this is Dr. Bernstein of Dr. Bernstein's Diabetes University. Uh, at this session, we're going to talk about how to reuse insulin syringes without spoiling your insulin. Uh, unknown to most uh, authorities in the field, uh, reusing insulin can cause problems with the insulin itself. Uh, I'll show you an example of what happened uh, when a patient brought to me a vial of insulin that she had been reusing. Uh, in my left hand is the reused insulin vial. In my right hand is a different insulin, but in a brand new vial. Uh, you can see that the insulin is quite cloudy uh, in the vial where uh, the insulins, where the syringes have been reused. I use the expression reused insulin, I meant reused syringes. And we're going to take a look at why this happens and how to avoid it. Uh, many years ago, I had cloudy insulin that patients brought me examined by a major manufacturer, and they found two things. They found lots of silicone particles in the insulin, and they also found polymerized insulin. You may recall from a prior session that the word polymer refers to a single molecule of a substance being attached to itself over and over, many copies of the molecule being joined together. And when insulin is polymerized, it forms a substance that could be insoluble or uh, uh, suspended as a suspension, as in this cloudy vial, uh, that cannot uh, perform in the usual f uh, fashion, cannot diffuse into blood vessels and so on. Um, so uh, where does the silicone come from? Uh, insulin syringes are lubricated with a, a tiny amount of silicone. Uh, but if you uh, repeatedly use the same insulin over, the same syringe over and over, uh, particles of silicone somehow end up in the insulin. Now, uh, let me tell you how you can reuse a syringe until the tip gets dull or until the needle gets bent. What you have to do initially is in, well, we'll, we'll do a demo while I'm talking. Here is a brand new insulin syringe, unused. We're going to take the cap off one end and we're going to take the orange cap off the needle. Now I'm going to inject a large amount of air, a whole syringe full of air, into the vial. The reason for that is as we remove insulin from the vial, Every bit that we remove causes a partial vacuum in the bottle. So we're preventing that vacuum but putting some excess air in. And we'll do that. Uh, what we do is we rapidly draw back on the syringe past our target dose and then we push it back to our target dose. That's if we were to throw the syringe away after we're through. Now, and then we'd take the filled syringe and inject from it. Let's say we've given injection, we've now used this syringe, we've now used this syringe once. In the needle is insulin. We have not, I didn't flush the needle with air, like by doing this, but even if I did that, there'd still be a little tiny bit of insulin in the syringe. And that insulin is going to polymerize over time. It might take a few hours, might take a few days, but eventually it'll be polymerized. And if I were again to fill this with air 
and inject the air into the bottle, I would be injecting that little bit of polymerized insulin into the bottle. And if I were to do this over and over with the same, same syringe maybe five or ten times and then get another syringe and make polymerized insulin in the other syringe and inject from that, eventually if I've had many s small shots out of the same vial, I'd be loading it up with poly little bits of polymerized insulin that serve as a seed for more polymerization. The problem is that it's a seed. Uh, the little bit you inject all by itself that you inject back into the vial is not what's causing the problem. It's the fact that it acts as a seed for more polymerization. And eventually you get the cloudy vials like I displayed earlier. So because we don't want to be injecting these polymers in, we take a new syringe once in a while, maybe um, here is another new, brand new syringe. And this is, let's say the, the needle is dull on this one now, I'm gonna throw the syringe away. The new one, I'm going to take and get a lot of new air into this vial where I've been withdrawing insulin for the past week out of the same syringe. I'm now gonna stick the needle from the new syringe into the vial. The plunger is out. I haven't, I haven't uh, used the plunger. Now the vacuum in this vial is going to suck in more air, so there will be no more vacuum in the vial. You do this once a week or so, uh, and you uh, prevent a vacuum from occurring. You could even stick the plunger back in the syringe and inject even more air in. This will last me about a week at the small doses that I use. If you're taking very big doses, you might have to take a new syringe and do this trick maybe uh, every three days. But at the small doses that most of my patients use, you do this once a week. So if you got a new syringe once a week, that would do the trick. Now, in practice, these syringes get dull after on average six or seven uses. So you'll be throwing the syringes away every six or seven uses anyway, starting with a new syringe that you could use for putting air into the vial. And the reason for putting air into the vial is if you get enough of a vacuum in here, it will fight, it will fight you when you try to pull a liquid out of the vial. Uh, that summarizes it. Uh, Good luck. Uh, you might do uh, a little practicing before you do it for real. The bulk of what you've heard on this video uh, appears in my book, Dr. Bernstein's Diabetes Solution, which is available at uh, most internet and local bookstores. It is published by the Hachette Book Group. I'd like to remind you that we have monthly free teleseminars every month at the site askdrbernstein.net. Doctor is spelt D-R, so askdrbernstein.net for a free monthly teleseminar. Uh, sign up a day or two in advance so that you get a reserved seat. Good luck and thanks for listening.